session. Then hit our Windows menu to start our browser. Call up Google Chrome. And we'll go ahead and find our bookmark. This will launch 3DX and I'll have to log in. I have 3DX starting in the Collaboration and Approvals app, so I switch over to My Changes to the Change Request tab, and then click to create a new change request. I click on the Description field and type in the description for my change request. Then I go ahead and click on the Reason for Change and attempt, well, poorly, to type in the description for a change. Then I scroll down and click to add an approval route. My search results find one. So I select my custom approvals route and I click OK, then OK once more and I'm done. So I tell Eggplant to complete the session, give it a working name, and rather than being stuck with my clumsy attempts, I now get to rework the session to make it a flexible script that will be repeatable on different platforms with different screen resolutions or configurations. So here I, go to, I get to fine tune all of the images that I will have Eggplant searching my screen to find. If I tighten the image to focus on a very specific area, the image recognition algorithms will be able to find this icon in a variety of resolutions and screen settings. If the icon itself changes from version to version or from selected to deselected, I can actually establish a collection of images and tell Eggplant to find any of them. When clicking on Chrome in my menu, I can actually switch from image search to optical character recognition instead and have Eggplant literally read the screen to find my browser. Capture an image for my bookmark, give it a name, check the search algorithm that I want Eggplant to use and move on to the next step in the script. Once again, I'm going to use OCR to pick up the word log in. When 3DX starts up, Eggplant recognizes that this step took a significant amount of time and automatically adds a max wait time for me. Now this is not a pause like we had to do in the olden days. Eggplant will immediately move on as soon as it's able to find the image, but this timeout will allow me to put a limit on how long the system will wait before it registers the page as not loaded and throws an error, logs it as an error. So I continue capturing the images and text that I want Eggplant to find giving each one a unique name so that I quickly build up a library of reusable images that I can use over and over as I perform tests on this application. In fact, even though I'm using Turbo Capture to record this long-ish series of events, for the purposes of my Eggplant DAI Digital Twin, I'll be dividing this script into smaller snippets so that the intelligent automation engine will have more flexibility on how it decides to test. Now, here when I click in the description field, I'm clicking in a blank area, and that's certainly not going to be easy to find. So what Eggplant allows me to do is to search for the description header as an image or with OCR and I can use the red cross hairs to tell eggplant where to click in this case about 20 pixels below the image this means we can target hotspots on images with multiple clickable zones and yes even Tescatia so again with the reasons for change I'll capture the header and tell eggplant to click below it give it a name now here you may remember I fumbled a little bit with my typing and Eggplant faithfully recorded all of my typos and backspacing. But I can easily change that to the text that I want. Again, I may replace that with a variable input later on, which I can have DAI populate with values from a list or external source for more complete testing. But for now, I'll just go ahead and put in a static text string. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Uh, once more, I need to use an alternate click location, this time with the scroll down arrow. But I don't really want it to click on the scroll down arrow. I want it to click above the scroll arrow, so in that area right above it. Now, Eggplant does have a scroll function and looping that allows me to easily scroll through the screens until I find something that I'm looking for, even though I may not know how far I have to scroll. This is great for handling search results. But in this case, uh, I'll just go ahead and relocate my click point to be just above that found image. On to the approver search, and here we're clicking on the ellipsis button. But as you can imagine, there are a lot of those. So I can once again look for the header, and I can either set a static click location, or if I wanted to, I could tell Eggplant to find the first ellipsis button that's below and to the right of where it found the header. Limiting this search area is a great way to guarantee you'll find the instance of the image that you want and to speed up searching. And I can also tell it to find all instances of that ellipsis button and then cycle through them to 
pick out which one that I want. Now, the search results are next. And that's a perfect example of requiring an alternate click location because I need to search for the name of my route. But can I click it? Oh no, not with 3DX. That name is actually a hyperlink that would launch the preview window for the object. I need to make sure that I don't click on the name of the object. So I capture the image that I want to find, give it a name, and I set my click location to be safely off of that hyperlink. Let me see if I can give it as long of a name as humanly possible. Uh, misspelling, but that's all right. We'll worry about that later. All right. Finally, I go ahead and I capture my OK buttons, making sure I zoom in nice and tight. Now, these zoom buttons, in the end, I'm going to be able to reuse the OK button because 3DX reuses that image as well. So there's no reason that I have to maintain multiple copies of that button. But for now, I'll just go ahead and grab that one and then grab our last one. Zoom in. That way I can pick which one I like best and save it and reuse it throughout all of my 3DX testing. Okay. Then I simply click Generate Script and Eggplant creates the final script for me, which I'm now free to edit to add validation, dynamic data inputs, and go ahead and farther uh, subdivide into snippets for my automation.